Hello everybody, Axel Wilkinson here with a hit film particle tutorial for you. Today we are going to look at creating this tunnel with particles, which could be used for various types of effects like wormholes or time tunnels or whatever you want. So we're going to start by focusing on how to create the tunnel shape with your particle emitter. Then we'll consider different textures and techniques for creating the appearance of the tunnel. And finally, we'll look at creating more interesting movement by curving the tunnel as we travel through it. So, in HitFilm, we're going to start by creating a new composite shot. Let's name it Tunnel. And we're going to add a new particle simulator. Select Yes to create our camera. And here's our default simulator, which you're probably familiar with. So, in the controls, the emitter shape and trajectory are the areas that we're going to use to create our tunnel shape. So, in the trajectory, Let's set that to cone, and then if you scrub through, you can see there's the cone shape that is being created there. The radius controls the width of the cone, this angle here. You can see if we increase the radius, then that just makes that cone wider. We're going to actually bring that all the way down to zero, so we get a tunnel with straight sides. And then we can adjust the orientation on the Y axis to 90 degrees, so that it's pointed straight at the camera. Now we can set the shape to circle. And then in the shape controls, we can use the radius to increase the radius of that circle to the size we need. I went to about 200, but you can adjust that to whatever your scene requires. Now we're going to enable the boundary control, which will force all of the particles being created to only originate around the very edge, the perimeter of that circle on the boundary. And that's basically how you create the tunnel shape. Now we just need to adjust it to get it some length to it. So to do that, we're going to adjust the position along the z-axis to minus 3000 to start with. And then we can adjust the speed and the life of the particle system to create the proper length for the tunnel. So let's start with a life of 5 seconds, assuming it won't take longer than that for the particles to reach the camera. And then we can just increase the speed until the particles come past the camera and our tunnel is the right length. So if we play that, now you can see that our tunnel shape is looking pretty good, but that feels a little bit slow to me. So let's increase the speed. I think I'm going to go ahead for a speed of, say, 2000. And then once we've increased that speed, we know that we can decrease the life because the particles are going to pass the camera much more quickly. So let's set the particle life to two seconds, and that will help to reduce the number of particles to optimize our effect. So there is our basic tunnel shape fairly quick and simple to set up. Now from here you can tweak the appearance by your selection of textures. You can adjust the speed to suit your preference. You can change the length of the tunnel by adjusting the Z position as we did earlier. If you want thicker walls to your tunnel, you can increase the number of particles per second. But I would recommend adjusting this after you select your textures because the specific textures that you use and their size will affect how many particles you need and you want to keep the number of particles as low as possible to optimize performance and rendering speed. So what I do is import my textures, get them looking the way I want, and then adjust the number of particles as needed to fill out the effect. So I'm going to go back to this effect, which we started with, and look at the process that I used to create this version of a time tunnel effect. I'm going to focus more on the concepts and principles that I used than on the specific settings and the values for each control that I dialed in. Because I think once you understand the concepts, you'll be more easily able to apply those in different situations and find them more beneficial. So here is our basic tunnel shape again after I've imported some textures. Now you can see if we look into the appearance controls, I've used a variety of different textures to build this effect. I selected a blue color and then I set the blend mode to add. And that gives us this bright area in the center of the effect. If we switch back to normal, you can see it's much more dull. Changing the blend mode to add really brightens up that center, draws our eye in, and pulls us into the effect. The next thing I did was turned on motion blur for this layer, which helps enhance the sense of movement and speed and just makes it look more natural. Next, I wanted to add some color accents to the tunnel. Now, I considered 
doing this using the appearance variation controls. I could go in there and turn the color up. And that gives us just a little bit of a rainbow variety of colors in there. But I didn't want that subtle variation. I wanted occasional bold contrasting colors. So to do that, I created a second particle system, which you can do by clicking this little button with the plus sign. So I created this second system, which I renamed Accents. And if I turn that back on, then you can see these occasional red particles as we scrub through the tunnel there. Now, because this particle system is part of the same emitter that we set up earlier, it's going to use that exact same tunnel shape that we've already dialed in. But I can adjust the properties of the individual particle system independently. So I've set this one up so there are only three particles, uh, these red particles being spawned per second. I've increased the size of them pretty significantly by cranking up the scale. But despite those changes, they still fit perfectly into our tunnel shape because they're being created by the same emitter. Using a second emitter like this is a great technique for adding additional specific details to a particle effect and still retaining a great deal of control. For example, suppose you wanted to add an electrical arc occasionally into this tunnel effect. Well, if you use a second emitter, then you can control the size, the frequency, the color, all those aspects of that electrical effect independently of the rest of your tunnel, but still have it naturally fit into that same tunnel shape. So at this point, I'm quite happy with how that's looking, but now I want to add some rings just to add some further definition to the tunnel shape. Even as it is, you can tell that we're traveling through a tunnel and you can see the ring of that tunnel down there at the distant end, but uh, closer to the camera here, it's less obvious. And so I thought just making it so we were flying through some rings would really help to enhance that effect. However, those rings will not work with the existing emitter shape that we have set up, because if I just created a new particle system, those rings would get stuck into the sides of our existing tunnel, and I need them to surround the tunnel so that we're flying through them. So instead, I just created a second emitter, which you can do using this little button next to the emitter's heading, and I renamed this second emitter rings. The shape of this emitter is a point, the trajectory is the same as our first emitter, it's a cone pointed straight at us, and then once those rings are shooting straight at the camera, we can adjust the size and everything so that they line up with the tunnel that we've already created. In the appearance controls for this system, you can see that there's only one texture which I've created and then imported here, and ideally you'd use more than one texture, but I'm going to show you some tricks using just this one to make it less obvious that it's the same texture over and over. So if we turn this emitter back on, then you can very quickly see the benefit of adding these rings. It really highlights the tunnel shape all the way through, even up close to the camera. It brightens the center area up a little bit more and just uh, really adds some detail to the effect. So to add some variety to our one ring texture, I basically went into the appearance variation controls and turned up every setting I had. I added some color variation. The base color I selected is a different blue than the main tunnel but it is still a blue, but then I added some color variation over the top of that. I cranked up the alpha quite a bit to create some range in the opacity of the rings. The texture angle controls the angle at which the textures first appear, and then the texture angle per second controls how quickly they spin. So as we play through that effect again now, the result isn't as good as if we created a variety of textures to begin with, but using those adjustments in the variation, we can hide the fact a bit that it's just one texture that we're using. So there is our finished tunnel effect. Now we've used two different emitters and three particle systems to create this, but since all of them are contained in a single particle simulation layer, we can very easily turn the whole thing into a preset, uh, which is a very useful feature of using multiple emitters and multiple particle systems within a single emitter. You can create much more complex effects, but still save them all as a single preset that you can use later on. So our next step is to create the curves in the tunnel, give it a path that it can follow so that it curves around. So I'm going to switch to a side view and you can see how I created a 3D point and then started by animating it along the Z axis. So here at the start of the timeline, it's at the zero position. And then I just move to the end of the timeline and set that Z position to minus 15,000. Once I had that trajectory set, then I could just go through the timeline kind of stopping at random points and shifting the position of that point up or down as needed. I'm not doing that right now because it's already done. 
but you can get the idea. I just randomly pick a frame and move it up or down to create some wandering in that path. Then I did the same thing from the top to get it to move left and right, just randomly clicking on frames and then shifting it to the left or right as needed to create a randomly wandering path. So if we scrub through the timeline now, you can see how that's kind of wandering back and forth. And the same thing from the side view. If we switch back, you can see it wandering up and down as we scrub through. And so that's going to give us some nice wandering movement to our point as we play through the timeline. Okay, so once I had all of that animation set, I went in and selected all the keyframes I just created and set the interpolation on all of them to smooth. That way I wouldn't get any corners as it changed direction. It would be a smoothly flowing path. Now that the animation on that point is all dialed in, I need two copies. One point to drive the particle simulator and one point to drive the camera. So I duplicated the point and then shifted one backward on the timeline by about two seconds. I then renamed the two layers so that I could keep track of which point was running the camera and which point was controlling the tunnel effect. So we've duplicated that point. The tunnel version of the point has been moved back about two seconds on the timeline. And now we can connect those points to the layers they're meant to control. So we'll parent the camera layer to the camera point. But for the particle simulator, we're not going to parent the layer. We'll actually control that in the emitter controls. In the emitter shape, we can just attach the emitter to our tunnel point layer. Now, since we have two emitters, we'll have to do that for both of them. But once we have that set up, then they'll both align perfectly to that point. So that should do it. Now, if we scrub through, hopefully our camera will end up inside the tunnel as it twists about. And that is looking pretty good. Now, when I first set this up, I actually had to tweak the timing of the tunnel point layer just a bit to make sure that it lined up. Because as you can see, if I slide this forward, boom, we're outside the tunnel. And so I just had to adjust the timing gradually until I ended up in the middle of the tunnel where I needed to be. So that is how it's done. I realize I went through this fairly quickly uh, rather than going into each setting in depth. But hopefully most of you were still able to follow what I was saying. Uh, and if, as I showed you the various controls and things, hopefully that all made sense. If some of you got lost in parts of that, please let me know which parts I confused you on and I can try to address that and clarify things for you. But as I mentioned before, I opted to focus on the concepts a bit more in this tutorial because I think that's going to prove more beneficial to all of you in the long run. If I tell you that I go into the appearance variation controls and set the alpha to 61%, for example, that's great for recreating this effect. But if I take a minute to explain why I was using the appearance variation controls, that I had a small number of textures and I wanted to create greater variety within them, once you understand that, then you can use that concept in all sorts of different effects, no matter what you're doing in HitFilm. So thank you very much for watching this. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet to get access to more tutorials like this, which hopefully are awesome. And let us know if you do have any questions or if you need any additional details on the process for this effect. Uh, I'll be happy to go into further detail if you need it. Bye for now.